Welcome back to this build series where I'm building a wide body Peugeot 206 with a Subaru engine and four wheel drive. The radiator is mounted in the boot, hence we have the custom body and the big air ducts. The next thing we are going to look at are the turbos. So this EJ205 engine came out of a 2003 WRX. As you can see, we have three turbos. The TD04 was the original turbo. However, this larger TD05 was fitted to the car. In my opinion, I want to do away with both of these turbos. This one in the middle is an IHI VF36 turbo. It's currently fitted with a Group N restrictor. I am unsure if this turbo has been fitted with the Owen Development's heat shield. However, this turbo was running perfectly fine when it came off the car. The main benefit of going for this IHI turbo is that it is a twin scroll turbo. In a twin scroll you get less lag. As the turbine sequences exhaust gases, there is less resistance as they go through the turbo. This allows the turbo to spool up a lot faster. As I won't be using this car competitively in rally, I can remove this restrictor. On a competition rally car, you have a certification tag for the restrictor. Normally it is attached to the lock wire to the restrictor. smells like race fuel. This log wire is quite sharp. As you can see, the turbine housings are very different between the IHI and the turbo that came off the car. I have two ports that come from the headers on the one and one on the other. Using this turbo, I'm going to get an equal length header that will fit this pattern. Where the downpipe bolts to the turbine housing is slightly different as well. That's the twin scroll, that's the standard. What I want to do is use the exhaust that I already have for the sports cat. However, I may need to get a downpipe that suits the new turbo and reattach it around there somewhere. Once I get confirmation to buy the turbo, I will order the exhaust header and then I can fit the turbo and figure out the downpipe. For now, I'm going to work on some of the stuff that's under the car. I want to check the hubs and remove the handbrake assembly. I'm not taking any chances with these springs. Altogether, that's a good weight saving. The only real problems with the rear hub assemblies are the back plates. As you can see, about three quarters of the offside is missing. The near side isn't so bad. The contact point for the handbrake and the brake disc offers good protection for the wheel sensor. I think I'll just cut the remainder off and I'll do the same to the other side. I say cut it off, but it's probably just gonna pull off. I have now purchased this turbo and I have already received the headers. As I said before, this is an equal length header. So I will show you the comparison between the standard exhaust and this one. Now you can see the obvious difference between an unequal length header and an equal length. The distance between the flange bolted to the engine and the pipe that goes up to the turbo is equal for each cylinder. Whereas on the stock exhaust, you have a long reach on the one side, then a really short distance on this side. This style exhaust produces a signature Subaru burble. However, this exhaust is much better for performance. With a twin scroll turbo, it's very well suited. My goal is to not make it obvious what engine is in this car. So having this exhaust set up and no scoop in the bonnet for the traditionally mounted top mount intercooler, it should suit the overall build. Another thing, even though we have twice as much pipe, it's still lighter than the stock parts. Let's see if it fits. Yeah, as I first predicted, we are just about touching the clip at the bottom of the intercooler. Only by a couple of millimetres, so with some small adjustments to the bottom end of the clip, it should fit on well. 
It's in place now, but it's sat snug against the clip there. So all I need to do is take the front bumper off, take the intercooler off, then I can cut this bar and mount it slightly further out because I want to account for vibration and movement on the engine. It's very important for me to keep the mounting points for the front bumper. Therefore, I would just cut the bar that runs across the back of the intercooler. I'll bring that out and I should be able to weld it in situ. Before I get this fully welded back on, I'm just going to check the manifold has plenty of clearance. We have around 8mm clearance. We have slightly less clearance on this front edge here. It's not super pretty by any means. This is a perfect example of building a development car. If I spend too much time getting everything perfect first off, if I had to spend hours and hours on this clip and then get it powder coated, it would be even more frustrating having to modify it for the header. I will leave the original mounting point for the intercooler in case I ever need to adjust it. For now, I'm just going to loosely bolt it in place so I can trial fit the up pipe and the turbo. I have just figured out the up pipe will not fit between the engine and the subframe. I think the easiest thing to do is to take the dog bone mount off the gearbox and I should be able to just lift this side of the engine up enough to get this pipe down and through. I don't have the engine crane anymore so this had to do. I've just loosened the bolts for the main subframe. Now we're through. So I have the turbo in place. Already I can see a number of issues. Whether it is the layout of the turbo or the exhaust, I'm not too sure. But you can see the housing is basically touching the gearbox there. Also, it looks as though it's sat too low down. I have slackened off the join from the header to the up pipe. This gives me room to adjust it so I can get the right clearance from the gearbox. I'll get the turbo back on and bolt it down to this. With 
about a 10 to 12 mil gap. Gives a nice amount of clearance around the gearbox. It also aligns with the intake pretty well. If I buy another up-pipe flange, which is 10 mil thick, plus another gasket, all I will need to do is get longer studs, and then it can bolt straight on. This means I don't have to cut the header or the up pipes, so everything is bolt on and reversible. On the same theme, back to the down pipe, down to the cat. I did say I was going to buy this section with the correct flange and reattach it there somewhere. However, a better option is to just replace the flange. So this is the gasket from the IHI Turbo. This flange is slightly bigger, which actually works out well. As they're both 10 millimeters wide, I can actually cut out the internal pattern of this flange and then slide it over this one so it can be welded around the back. This will allow me to retain the nice edge that will bolt up to the turbo. I'll do this once I've sorted the engine mount, turbo and up pipe, then I can get the down pipe aligned underneath the car. Next I'll finish off this part of the wiring loom that goes into the plugs on the gearbox. Then I want to start sealing the bulkhead, so putting the rubber grommets back in where the cables are coming through into the engine bay. just attach the earth to the gearbox. I'm going to leave the hole where the engine loom comes through because I may need to run some more wires after testing. Also, I will leave this one for now because the electrical cutoff cable needs to run through there. I have also made a grommet for the power to the starter motor. Next, I'll seal all of the holes in the A-pillar. That's it for another episode. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. We are going to do another Q&A soon on this channel for this build. So leave your comments below. Hit that subscribe button and I'll see you very soon. Now I'm going to have it. Now I'm going to get and now I'm going now I'm going to crawl around under the car and get the last bit of Gravitex underneath to protect the floor pan. Wish me luck.